Street art and graffiti is the skin of Bristol. The skies and the attitudes are so grey that we need a colourful injection into our eyesight. Bristol has it all, from shitty tags on nearly everything, to actual banksies. And I'm going to cover a lot of different areas of Bristol, showing the good, the bad and the goddamn ugly. I was always interested in graffiti, and when I arrived in Bristol I understood that it was a city that welcomed street art. But at the time I didn't know that graffiti could even be street art. I always knew that graph was illegal, but then I realised people were building careers from being graffiti writers or, subsequently, street artists. I think invasive imagery which is everywhere, ruining the landscapes, sitting in your mind subconsciously, more often than not sucks to look at and is a shame to have, but that's just the advertisement industry. And I find it concerning that people hate or are offended by graffiti, but not businesses putting their logos in the land, sea and the air. I realised that if everyone were a graffiti artist, the world would look like a year 11's exam table, and there wouldn't be much beauty in it if everyone did it. But another side would be tagging, but we will get to that shortly. If graffiti is on public property, it can be bad. But if someone writes on an abandoned building, warehouse, or anything else unused, that's big and ugly, surely it's a good thing. Graffiti is the backdrop to the lost and forgotten parts of the city. I heard Banksy say, what's wrong with someone improving the place that they live? If there is an eyesore and no one's fixing it, be the change that no one else is doing. It's a given that private property shouldn't be touched unless permission is given. And again, Bristol is amazing and some homeowners are super amazing for us. And if you stick around long enough, you'll find out why I got arrested. Before I arrived in Bristol, like I said, I didn't know graffiti was or even could be street art. I didn't know what street art was. It sounds like a bunch of stinky, crusty, vegan hippies that do mushrooms on the regular. While I was only half wrong, there was such a big side to street art that I didn't know. Then I thought it was working class graffiti versus middle class street art. If graffiti was the illegal, thrill-seeking, rebellious kid, street art would be mostly posh, well-educated, studio practicing and jet-setting bunch of Tobies. While I was only half wrong, both of them have big sides I wasn't aware of. It can be a difficult one to separate at times. There are distinct practices and disciplines within each street art and graffiti that would kind of give it away which one it would be. So tagging is graffiti and can't be street art. And it's also believed that stencils are street art and cannot be graffiti, but it's very rigid. A general rule of thumb though. I've seen some stencil tags that are so complex or in a crazy place that they do kind of become street art. The practice of pure graffiti can be hardcore. Often they consider themselves to be artists and would prefer the term vandal more. You should raise or rack your cans, meaning you shouldn't pay for your pieces. Also, trains, coaches will get targeted more because of the wide range of people that would see it. Also, local markets and areas would be targeted like territory. It's believed long-standing pieces should remain. If a piece only lasts the night, it shouldn't matter because the rush of it all should be enough. Crews can be very clicky and not everyone in graffiti world is like this. Most people are independents, trying to make the community more colourful and enjoyable to live in. It is mostly males that partake in these activities. There are of course females, but weirdly it's not like it's a 50-50 thing. Not every graffiti writer cares for legal rules though. People didn't do it for the approval of the recognition of the state. That's why at one point graffiti was really big in the hip hop scene for the sheer fact it was counterculture. Hip hop has radically changed now, that's for a whole different video. And street art is a practice which includes graffiti. It's where graffiti writers can make money in a career. From shop businesses and house owners, etc. They can commission people to improve the bland metallic sh shutters and the creatively vacant area. Another classic move is making prints of your work. All merch is good, prints are just a traditional and classic way for artists. Also by doing pieces, labelling them and by posting them on social media you can create a huge following for exposure. Nearly every tag is illegal, however graffiti, street art and murals can be legal or illegal. And I gotta give up to Bristol for creating some spots there are 9 legal walls about. But still, every underpass, tunnel, skate park, construction board and many more are completely covered in graph. So you guys kinda gotta embrace it a bit more. Graffiti has illegal roots but now has a spot in commercial markets, so leaning into it makes sense. 
honestly to reduce tags make more places to go and spray also tools to create and educate ultimately you can't stop a lost young kid with a marker pen just wanting to be noticed people don't realize how much it costs to be a graffiti writer or a street artist paint isn't cheap roughly four pound a can and it can be upwards of eight pounds so depending on what you want to do depends on what can you need to buy think of it like this if someone has used five colors on one piece that could be up to 20 pound some spray shops have deals though but that would probably last just a few square meters also think of it like of a mural or in the case of a mural a piece with multiple colors and shades can cost easily over 50 pounds to finish all for something that could be painted over the very next day hours of work a ton of time and a lot of money all gone but not out of hate but another eager artist trying to do their piece with street art there are a lot of people that have been fortunate enough to be in a studio to practice their craft techniques might be better learned without the fear of the police turning up practicing leads to excellence and it clearly shows and even with the most great individuals they can surely appreciate it I've heard people compare Upfest and the Hear No Evil, See No Evil gallery, which is the big buildings in the city centre of Bristol, to a live vandalism festival. Bristol has mostly accepted street art, and when you visit other parts of the country, you start to realise it's only graffiti, and without the embrace of the citizens, the street art is missing. London has a booming street art scene, and that's probably why Banksy moved to the Shoreditch area. That's why the mix of graffiti and street art is a must for every city. Across Europe as well, you've got a lot of cities that pop, and there's a good list if you Google it. But I mean, to have this in your nation, I mean, look at this. You've got to come and see it if you haven't seen it at some point. It is everywhere. There's so much of a selling point to Bristol anyway, but I think the graffiti is definitely a great place to start. Colours, shapes, and obviously the diversity of it. It's just so immense. Also, if you do want some Banksy artworks, you have to check out the other videos on my channel. I've got all the Banksy's that I left in Bristol out there as well, including the new one he did uh, at the beginning of the year. Gotta check him out. I just want to show off his peers in this video. If we take North Street and East Street as two examples in Bristol, then we can see the differences between the two, but they're very close together in Bristol. You can see the difference that East Street has graffiti and some street art, but North Street has, has up first and has the initiative to spray shutters, creating more and mostly street art. Up first has worked in East Street, but the push really is in North Street. And whether that's because North Street is the middle class and uh, East Street is the working class is still up for debate. It's still great to have both areas of Bemster work with up first and for them to create amazing scenes to provide a place for people to showcase their skills. They also do a temporary board setup for people to do a, a live spray session for people to watch. And it's held in summertime. And of course, it does rain every single year. I will add here that Tigers have targeted that first before. And I think that is stupid and terrible because it's stealing thunder away from a piece. I've heard people say that art, uh, street art sorry, is the establishment taking graffiti away and that the anti-establishment roots shouldn't be forgotten about. But it's still a shitty way to protest is to tag a piece, or even worse, just put a line through it. Tagging is the real world version of Rule 34 of the internet. If you don't know what that is, just give that one a quick Google. You can see the clear difference between the two. So a lot of time and a lot of effort has been put into Upfest and the, all the street art that you see. And it's absolutely amazing to walk past and walk through. It just makes such a difference. When you see the other parts of the country that are just blank, uninspiring, just there's nothing there right but then you look around and people have taken the time to make our days better day by day because that's essentially who was for us for no one else it went they did obviously gain a little bit of money for it or they have their career for it but look we're the ones that get to benefit bristol has nine legal walls that allow you to spray on you have victoria park dean lane the People's Republic of Stokescroft, Montpellier Park, St. George Park, Barton Hill Boxing Club, the Avon River, the east side, the Shooting Range, and Riverside. 
Make note though, if you've had a historically big and criminal campaign with a particular piece, I wouldn't use it on a legal wall. Also, there is a website I can link uh, with all nine walls. Construction boards get sprayed a lot, but remember it is illegal, so to make sure to get in contact with the company that owns the board. They are massive uh, and temporary and make a great way to practice. But again, always double check it. Underpasses and tunnels are covered in graph, but again, it is illegal, even though you wouldn't think it is. Here are a selection of famous artists from Bristol. You have Cheo, Inky, We Are Europe, John Doe, of course Banksy, Silent Hobo, Nick Walker, Chiba, Jody, and Dragon Man. I only gap his proper name to put on the screen now. What I should have done when I was walking around the legal walls, I spent some time and then counted the amount of colours and then I like, tried to equate or calculate how much money was truly spent on just that wall, on one wall, on one day alone. It, it, I reckon it's got to be over uh, over 200. Do you mean? Well, depending on the wall, depending on the place, right? But it's going to be a big amount. Tagging is generally hated by all that don't do it. Graph and street art being the skin and tagging being the misspelt face tattoos. No matter how much I try to explain tags like hieroglyphs, symbols, names and messages of souls that just want immortality. Most tags are awful, unartistic and bland. And on top of that, they're wrote on something without permission. The thing is that they can be a progressive step towards graffiti and street art, but it's nearly impossible for the community to embrace that. The artist I first showed at the video, he began tagging and he got caught, so he later thought, hmm, there's got to be a better way and he got more creative and he moved on to what he was doing. One thing I haven't quite covered enough is the reason that a lot of taggers and graffiti writers do this and what they crave. It's the adrenaline. The rush of creating something that you shouldn't, that the state would despise, fuels you like no other. Feeling the same but opposite of stealing because you're giving something often from your heart or your personal to you. What's the saying? Too old to explore the waves, too young to explore the universe, but born at the right time to draw on absolutely everything. I will use myself as an example. I was caught and charged by the courts for criminal damage. Now it sounds pretty bad, but what I actually done was I added to a David Bowie mural. And I added, but I didn't complete a gravestone the week after he had died. And when I got out of court, it had cost me 280 pounds. Well, that's what I get for not getting permission. But I was already added to an already graft wall, so it's not like, you know. The only time I got arrested, it was the only time. And worst of all, the mural was tagged over and then the whole wall was turned into a loading bay. I wasn't caught by being grassed up either. It was by random chance. But because the police was responding to a call nearby, it was just turning the car around and there I was. They read that out in court. A lot different, and I believe a lot worse, was the person that tagged the Avon Gorge called Wes. He got 17 months in prison, and here's the article below in the description. Dotcom and Tox both got arrested and given jail time as well. Sesk, another Bristol tagger, was given 16 months uh, on 70 charges. There is another link in the description, and he was interviewed for the Bristol Cable, and he gave some great insight, and it said that he has caused over £100,000 of damage got a lot of famous artists from Bristol. I'm going to showcase a few of them here. So first of all you've got Cheo. This thing is definitely the bumblebees. You will see it a lot around Bristol. He probably had one of the longest careers as well. And you have Angus. Legendary Angus. This is Silent Hobo. The bunny man. The bunnies are everywhere. They're literally multiplying like, I don't know, if I know a good metaphor I'd use it, but they're just multiplying, do you know I mean? These rabbits. Of course you've got Inky, good sign everywhere. Again, Cheo, Cheo just pops up. And you do have a lot more as well. You have like Jody, John Doe, We Are Europe, Nick Walker, and Chiba. Oh, uh, of course, little old Banksy, of course. Oh. 
Banksy started out graffitiing, but he didn't have the ability to go freehand spraying with complete precision and be quick. His words were, I was crap. The clear progression to what he is now is obvious. More murals and less tags is a big one. And homeowners, don't be afraid to express yourself. Or if you're not a homeowner, go buy a tin of paint, put up some boards in the garden and get practicing yourself. Don't forget, like and subscribe. Plenty more content on the way. I appreciate for you watching.